question. And that the way that that works is it's the same number that you donate at. 785-621-4110. If you think you know the answer to the trivia question, uh, then you call in that number. If you are correct and you're the first person to get it correct, we will put your name into that drawing. Um, at 6 o'clock, which is not too far away, crazy enough, uh, you we will draw one winner. And if you are that winner, you get a $50 gift certificate to Messenger Traditional Catholic Books and Gifts. Um, and uh, we ask that uh, you would uh, support them um, and uh, thank them for uh, that gift. All right, here we go. So for the two o'clock hour, our first question is, which pope added the five luminous mysteries to the rosary? Was it A, John the 23rd, B, Paul the sixth or C John Paul the second, which Pope added the five luminous mysteries to the rosary A John the 23rd B Paul the sixth or C John Paul the second seven, eight, five, six, two, one, four, one, one, zero. We started the afternoon with $81,174 uh, in donations uh, from all of you out there. Uh, let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it going as I welcome in our next guest. We've got uh, Tucker Mall uh, here uh, with us getting ready to talk about choosing to do the hard things in an easy world. That's an awesome topic. Nice. How you doing, sir? Good. How are you? <laughs> Good. So Tucker is uh, a Medicare and senior insurance agent for uh, Senior Insurance Solutions. He's married to Jill. They have four children ranging from ages two to 10. And the family is involved in various ministries at St. Joseph's Church here in Hayes. That is awesome to have you in here, man. It's been a little while, but it's always good to see you. You do. Things are well. Let's start with the uh, luminous mysteries uh, <laughs> on, our, uh, on our question because I, I love the luminous mysteries and I'm disappointed that we only get a sample like once a week. Yeah, Thursdays. And uh, it's like these are so important and mm -hmm. vital. It's funny how long it took us to add to um, the rosary, but. I wish we had a, a more opportunity to say them. I guess I could say. I guess we could. I yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah, I, every time I'm praying them, I'm like, these should be required more often. Yep. Yep. I agree. I don't know where maybe we should stick two of them on one day. People are listening to me like, no, don't do, you know, but yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I kind of wondered the same thing too. I'm not, Wait, let's see. Oh, we did get a winner. So now we can actually talk about it the way we want. So Karen McAllister is our trivia winner. Congratulations, because it was, um, well, now um, St. John Paul II um, who uh, added those. And I agree with you, Tucker, that like these are such giant times in Christ's life that like um, it, it just seems proper that he did that. It's it's kind of ironic. The, the Eucharist is our center of our faith and, <laughs> yeah. and it took uh, now saint pope john paul the great to yeah. say um these should be part of the rosary and, yeah and it's like well obviously yes they should but absolutely uh, yeah, i don't know it's kind of funny that uh, it took that long but here we are absolutely it feels, it feels so complete now that we have and i think the other thing too that the rosary is is so beautiful at doing is helping us understand christ's life from conception yeah all the way through death resurrection to and marries this beautiful book in on each end of, yeah uh, you know it's, it's devoted to her but also she we have no mary we have no jesus yeah there we go. There oh, we go. thanks okay. all right now they can hear you better Sorry. <laughs> thank you on what? Oh, okay. Thank you. I guess my wife called in because oh, I didn't good. have your mic turned up. And so now we're going better. All right. Awesome. Thanks. I can yell louder if we need to. <laughs> no, no, no. That was my fault. Um, but I appreciate it. Thank you, honey, for calling in. And, uh, you know, it's just like being at home. <laughs> she like, gets to remind me of the things I forget to do. I'm so blessed. Oh, awesome. All right. So, um, you know, talking about um, the the luminous mysteries and stuff like that, you know, your your topic here is choosing to do uh, hard things in an easy world. Um, and that actually is kind of a good introduction to this <laughs> because the rosary is not always easy to say, you know, sure. and it making it a part of your life, uh, making it especially a daily part of your life, especially for somebody who's not the most patient person in the world. That 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 can be a difficult thing, you know. Yeah. 
What do you got to say to that? Uh, I don't know if you've timed yours, but uh, I can get them done in about 10 to 15 minutes uh, the whole wow, way through. You're faster than me. Um, maybe that's not a good thing, <laughs> but uh, we're blessed with living out in the country. And so no matter where I drive, it's a 10 to 15 minute drive. And okay. um, so it's real easy to jump in the car and. Um, hit the the radio off and grab my rosary beads because I can say a, a rosary from home to wherever I'm going. Um, and so sometimes it's out of necessity is because I, I don't like to have my rosary interrupted. So let's, let's uh -huh. get this done. I know I've, I got to be at my destination within 10 to 15 minutes and let's, let's get it done. Uh, funnily, funny enough, um, St. Nick's church is the opposite side of town from me, but uh -huh. it's, quick to get there because of the interstate oh yeah and so i can usually i'm uh, you know saying my hail holy queen as i'm pulling into the the uh parking lot of of uh saint nick's so yeah wow so we there are so many places that we can take this conversation <laughs> um but you know you you at one time um were part owner um, in the CrossFit gym, correct? Yeah, I, and, I really don't want people to switch their radio stations because I'm going to talk about fitness for an hour. You know, uh, <laughs> sometimes people will roll their eyes and say, oh, that's that's out of my realm and I don't want to scare anybody off. But I think I, I kind of struggled with how to how to phrase this. But I uh -huh. think a lot of us, you know, wake up in our climate controlled houses yeah. and we get in our climate controlled cars and then we go and we sit at a desk um, in our cushy chairs all day mm -hmm. just to get back in our climate controlled cars and eat our warm dinner and and watch some TV in our climate controls house just yeah. to wake up and do it again the next day. And we're not challenged. We're not um, yeah. given any adversity. And then when adversity shows up, we're like, Oh my God, what, what's <laughs> happening here this in my life? Something's wrong. I'm not comfortable. Right. And so I think that's one of the things that, um, as you alluded to, um, we started the CrossFit gym back in 2013. Uh -huh. And so I, we've been in the fitness, uh, industry realm since 2011. That's going on what, 13 years yeah. coming up. And, uh, we've seen ebbs and flows and different challenges and, and things. And one of the things that I, I had to start laughing at was when we first started in CrossFit in, in 2011, it was all about the extreme. How okay. hard can you go? How fast can you go? How fit can you get? It's kind of crazy. And as we learned more and we, we kind of toned that back a little bit, okay. it's probably a good thing. Um, but it was just, like I said, it was a little over the top. And I think it, it would scare a lot of people off. Um, but learning to suffer on purpose uh -huh. is, is a good thing. And then I saw this trend of uh, fitness people, especially online, um, start to do more like meditating and fasting. And as a uh, born and raised Catholic, I had to start giggling because I was like, the Catholic church has, has taught these things for <laughs> thousands of years of the importance of, uh, purposeful suffering, uh, not eating a lot and, uh, meditation and prayer, you know, and it's like these fitness gurus are, are touting these massive benefits. And it's like, <laughs> I'm Catholic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I understand these thoughts. <laughs> and so the, um, the rosary is kind of a, another one of those funny examples of, you know, these, these fitness gurus are talking about like transcendental meditation is something where you repeat a mantra over and over again. And I'm like, dot, 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 you mean like the Hail Mary that we say 50 times in a rosary? Like, it's like, we've been down this path. You guys should yeah. check out the Catholic church, you yeah. know? And it was, it's so funny how even the, the CrossFit gym, some of the benefits that we saw were such, it was so mirrored to the Catholic church and the community is great and the shared suffering and the, just the, the connections that you can make. I don't know. It, it's when you get both of those, you see how they, how similar they are. Wow. And you know, one of the things I, I think 
is uh, that if you look back at a lot of the saints, they would have imposed daily small sufferings of some sort. Um, you know, I, I remember reading, I don't remember which it was, but there was a saint when she was young, like 12 years old. Um, she would put um, like um, broken pencil pieces in her shoes and walk around like that all day, you know, um, just to cause her some discomfort in some way or another. You know, Did like you as if she didn't have enough back hundreds of years ago. Yeah. You know, she lived a hard life already. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, let's do this. And it's funny. I didn't send you my notes ahead of time, but you're stealing no. right off of my note sheet. Oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Really I, just, I can't remember which saint that was too, but I think he put like tax in his shoes to remind himself <laughs> through the day that like um, my life is pretty easy. And this is what Christ would have gone through is this suffering of, ow, that hurts. Ow, that hurts. Ow, that hurts. Yeah. You know? Disclaimer, kids, don't put tax in your shoes. <laughs> All right. Now back. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of that nowadays where um, we – we see kids like hurting themselves and like, that sucks. They, they should not do that. Yeah. Um, but also then we read about saints intentionally hurting themselves to conform themselves to Christ. And so it's kind of like this balance of like, what's your intent, right? Yeah. Um, and what was the purpose? And is this, yeah. Is, is this harming my body in such a way that it would um, demean my personhood? Right. Yeah. Or can, are there penances I can impose that actually draw me closer to Christ? Right. And yeah. the same thing with the, the saints who earn the stigmata that has to be oh, man. incredibly painful oh. and they have to be so close to Christ. But then, you know, we remember them and we look back and we're like, oh, wow, there's no way I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I do hard workouts. I do crazy stuff all the time. Um, We'll have to talk about me sitting in my ice bath too, but um, <laughs> it's nothing close to earning the stigmata. <laughs> like yeah. that has to be incredibly painful. And a lot of them was it Padre Pio who would hide his, yeah. you know, because he's going through the suffering and he didn't want anybody to know about it. But it's like it's it's there. Yeah, absolutely. Really quick break. Um, I wanted to announce that we had a, a most generous donation from Glenn and Sonia Hazelhorse. They donated three hundred dollars uh, toward uh, this ministry. So thank you very much, uh, Glenn and so Glenn and Sonia. Um, and uh, we we really appreciate everybody listening. Uh, keep listening. Keep bringing those donations in seven eight five six two one four one one zero. I'm on talking with uh, talking with Tucker Mall here this afternoon. Um, on on our uh, fall carathon, his mercy endures forever. And uh, the topic we're talking about is choosing to do hard things in an easy world. Um, so Tucker, yeah, we are, um, we do live in that world where we don't know suffering like previous generations. I personally think, I mean, our parents' generation was definitely tougher than us. Um, their parents was probably the toughest generation in a long time because everything they had to go through. Um, but even for us, you know, there are a lot of things we don't wish for before. And, and there are like medical interventions that make things a lot better and are very good. Like mother mortality rate, you know, is down from where it used to be, which is a great thing. But civilization, I, I guess I can say even just generations um, before part of those hardships helped them to actually have more faith sure you know would you say the same thing that oh man we don't know how to suffer and therefore our faith is suffering whereas they it was a natural part of their existence to have to suffer and either you had faith or what do you do throw up your hands and just say i give up well and i mean we could just look at a timeline of the the increase of technology the increase of the ease of everyday life and the decline of faith and, and mm -hmm. religion importance in, in people's everyday life. And so, you know, we got to get rid of our cell phones and get rid of all of that, you know, yes and no, but definitely take them with a grain of salt and, yeah. and, you know, still put our, our effort and energy towards, um, what's important towards our faith, um, yeah. and try to eschew those, uh, those technological advances, but, um, yeah. another, uh, saint, since we were talking about that earlier, um, actually it's funny. We named our, our oldest daughter after 
my wife's grandmother, Ro- Rosella. Um, so her middle name is Rose. Yeah. Um, and then later, actually, when she's doing her her homework for school, when they have to do a report on a saint, she's uh-huh. picking Saint Rose after her her middle name. And Saint Rose of Lima uh, has some some beautiful things that she used to do. Uh, she was, she was gorgeous. And, um, as my oldest daughter is too. So hopefully she can, <laughs> uh, take her saint in, uh, and commit that as well. But to deter, uh, suitors, she would cut off her hair and blister her skin with hot peppers, oh um, goodness. to keep, uh, people away from her. And, uh, she regularly wore a crown of thorns, um, practiced fasting, slept only a few hours a night on a bed of, uh, pot shirts, you know, like ground up. Yeah. Yeah. Pots. Holy cow. And so I was like, again, my kids are teaching me things as they Uh tend to do. And, um, it's like, oh, we didn't know about that when we named you, you know, after (laughs) St. Rose, but what a good example, you no know? Kidding. And so it's just amazing. I know, uh, Bill often talks about this, Bill Mayer, yeah. um, about how people these days are concerned with their legacy or, or being remembered generations mm-hmm. from now. And I was talking with my kids the other day. I don't know my great, great grandparents' names. Yeah. I just, I don't remember them. Yeah, I mean, I know St. Rose of Lima's name. Uh huh. She's a saint, you yeah. know, and Bill always talks about how saints are memorized by so many Catholics around the world and they leave a legacy behind. Yeah. But many of our parents or grand grandparents, we don't even know their names. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, I'm glad you said that because, uh, I, it got me thinking also that, uh, most of these saints too, um, they they didn't want recognition. You know, you look at um, Saint Teresa of Lisieux, uh, the little flower. You know, that actually was completely her point. <laughs> she was like, "I don't need to be the." You know, she might point out like Saint Augustine or something like that. You know, this saint that everybody knows about or anything. As long as I'm in God's garden, I can be the smallest of flowers, just as long as I'm there. And, and I'm like. Yeah. Yeah, what a perfect point you make that most of those who didn't want the recognition are now these pillars of our faith that we do know. And yet all of those people in our society who do want the recognition, you're probably going to be forgotten of within about, you know, 10, 20, 50 years of your death. You know, and, and so, wow, great point. Want to jump in really quickly and thank uh, Diane Kerner. Uh, she just gave $100. Thank you, Diane. Appreciate that. Keep listening. Keep praying for us. You guys are absolutely wonderful. You know, as you guys are out there driving around, picking up kids, whatever it is, um, throw those prayers out for us um, and also uh, send up some prayers. Ask God how um, he wants you to uh, bless us whether it's through those prayers, donations, both, whatever it is, uh, call 785-621-4110. I want to get back to uh, talking with Tucker Mall um, and uh, choosing to do hard things in an easy world. All right. Tucker, do you got somewhere you want to go from here? Um, let's do some of these other quotes or, or things that I found. Um my, my sister was on here a couple days ago. She did an amazing job and I'm, yeah, I don't know. I've, of course, you always want to outdo your siblings and, and do a better job, <laughs> Everything's right? a competition. <laughs> uh, but, and I didn't know I was in such a star studded day. I mean, uh, the bishop was on earlier. The bishop was. Uh, Father Leo was just in here. Yep. Um, we could even bounce off of his topic. I was listening on my way here and you know, the pornography is easy, right? Yeah. It's hard to say no to that. Yeah. Choose, choose the hard. Everybody's got something that's different. That's hard for them. Uh But, uh, and the other thing I was thinking about, and I'm not even getting my quotes here, but anyway, uh, on a scale of like one to 10, if something is a 10 and, and that sounds hard to me, that is, should be number one on your list to do. If it's one on easy, like sitting on the couch, you know, drinking beer and eating pretzels. Well, maybe that's the thing you should not be doing, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Uh, Now, obviously there are some things that are like way out of our realm and I don't want to limit anybody, but, uh, you know, somebody who's in a wheelchair should maybe not strive to climb Mount Everest. You know, it's just like, 
you know, but there's something that they could strive for that sounds really hard and it, their hard would be way different than my heart, yeah. you know? And so choose what's hard, um, on purpose and use it as a devotion. I know, um, a lot of times, I mean, I grew up in that era when you were whining or suffering and de depends who you were whining and suffering to. And they'd say, okay, offer it up. Oh you know, yeah. Okay. Grandma. I'll do that. You know, it's just <laughs> offered up for what, you know, the poor souls in purgatory. Yeah. Uh, but I, I've started this, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a habit. I need to get it in more of a habit, but every morning I sit in my ice bath and it didn't start there. I started with cold showers and then I, okay. I worked up to a, a tub of extremely cold water, but every morning I'm sitting in there saying my prayers and, and devoting that suffering to, that's awesome. to something better. So I, I spent, I'm, my goal is three minutes and, um, well, my, my guidelines are depending on how cold the water is. If it's between, okay. uh, under 40, 30 to 40, three minutes, you know, 40 to 54 uh -huh. minutes, 50 to 65 minutes. So just kind of dependent on that, but it's definitely a challenge and it's something wow. that, um, it wakes you right up in the morning. Um, oh, but it's bad. also a, a mental block to jump over to, to get in there, to force yourself to do that thing. But the first 30 seconds are horrible. The, the <laughs> last two and a half minutes aren't too bad. So it's definitely a, something learned. And, and now I got my wife in doing it too. So, uh, no we're worries. definitely offering up some suffering on a, on a regular basis. So um, that's awesome. You know, I do that to my uh, to my runners. Um, there was only one time I'm like, no, everybody's taking an ice bath today. Um, usually I let them pick. But it's kind of funny because as cross country runners, what do they do? They go out and punish themselves and then they punish themselves with an ice bath, which actually, though, feels really good afterwards, as sure. you know, you know, um, but that, I think that's kind of funny. Go get some punishment to get some more punishment, you know, and um, so so glad you bring that up. But also completely agree that sin is easy. Um the circumstances that lead to some sins may be more difficult than others, but simply saying yes to your appetite, so easy. Anybody can do it. And so you're perfectly right. It, it, it takes the person who can say, all right, yeah, giving into that, all I have to do is give in. Striving against it, that's difficult. Yeah, and that should tell you right there, well, what one is going to bring me uh more graces and, and what, yeah, which one is going to make me a spiritually better person? Well, look what Christ went through and you probably got your answer there. So sure. And we were, I was just discussing this with my son the other day because he, he's been struggling with, um, a few things of, I, I don't want to go do that. I don't want to yeah. go to wrestling practice or whatever it is. is. And I'm going, you know what? what did Christ do right before he was crucified? Was he skipping around in the garden saying, I can't wait to go die? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was crying. He was sweating blood. Yeah. He was praying like, Oh, can this cup please pass from me? <laughs> but not my will yeah. yours. And I'm going to go and do what I need to do. And so no, he wasn't, he was willing, but he wasn't, excited about it. And yeah. so, so much of our lives is I might not be excited to go do this thing. I wasn't excited to work out today. I, I wasn't feeling great, but I did it anyway, you know, and like, yeah. um, you know, why not? Yeah. Why I mean, it, there are so many ties between those two things because you're exactly right. Everybody can, um, go in and we'll move beyond just working out and stuff, but, um, anybody can go work out when they want to, but it's the, the dedicated people that go, Oh no, I'm, I'm tired. I'm not going to do it. You know, or I, I admit, i even as a coach, I'm kind of a fair weather runner. Um, I like the temperature to be the right temperature and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I have to admit that. Um, but it's, 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 it's also awesome because it's those days where you don't feel like doing it that you make the most gains. You know, it's those days where you push yourself and you're like, but I'm going to go do it anyway because it's going to make me healthier. Um, I'm going to be a better person throughout the day. I don't snap at my children as much, you know, um, and and also it's a lot of times funny enough. God, even I see gives us graces in those moments 
sometimes, you know, it's the days where you want to, you're like, yeah, this is going to be the best day ever, you know? And so I'm ready to go and you go out and you're like, oh, this is tough, you know, and you have to slug through it. Sometimes I find it's even those days where you're like, I don't want to, but you push yourself and then you're like, that was a great workout. I got to ask you though, too, you're a coach, you got a bunch of kids, you got a job and I've seen you running around town. How do you fit running. And the other thing too, is I've started running. I hate running. I was, I thought about, I have I a it. shirt that says running sucks on it. I was going to wear it today. I didn't think that was appropriate, <laughs> That's awesome. but, uh, had I known you were going to interview me, I probably would have worn it, but also running is, uh, you gotta do it for a little while to get a benefit. Yes, you can't you run for five, unless you're running hard sprints. Yeah. You can't run for five minutes and be like, I, I got my workout mm -hmm. in today. It takes 20, 30 minutes yeah. minimum sometimes. Yeah. How do you, how do you fit that in? Um, well, the right sun now comes I'm up? broken. So <laughs> it may be one of those things where I got to go to the doctor and see, is there something worse than just a quad pull there? But we'll see. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully God just repairs that for me and says, all right, you know, cause I'm getting older. Um, and so things, I mean, so one of the things is I am blessed to be a coach. Um, and so I get to go do that. Um, but also, you know, there are times that, um, well, also I'm blessed with, um, a wonderful wife. Um, and she knows that I'm a, just a better person if I get that exercise in. And so she's like, yeah, go, go, you know? Um, and, and so that is one of those things that, um, yeah, you're right. You know, we have to find, um, the proper time to get those things in. Um, and, uh, I'm just blessed with a, a good family. <laughs> I guess what I would say is my wife's very unselfish. Um, and so she allows me that time whenever I need it. But, sure. Yeah. Yeah. My wife and I do a, a good job of, okay, you want to work out now? I'll go work out, you know, just kind of trading off that time mm -hmm. of, you know, um, I'll, I got the kids, you go get yours done and then we'll switch and stuff. So yeah, yeah. it's good. Um, I talked about my sister earlier, but she, recommended i listen to matthew perry's book which he passed away recently he's on friends chandler uh -huh. and uh he struggled with addiction his whole life and it's it's a sad book i'd mm -hmm. recommend people read it because it blew my mind um with just how good he was on friends and all that time he was struggling with um different drugs that he was addicted to and and it just and how much money he had and, and all of that and still suffered through all of this. But he had a quote, uh, he had a section in there about embracing effort. Okay. If it's, if it's hard, go for it, you know, but then he also had, and this blew my mind, a, a little quote in there. Uh, he said, um, he quoted St. Peter, not that St. Peter actually said this, but, uh, that he would imagine if when you die and you meet St. Peter at the gates, uh, he said, do you have any scars? No. Was there nothing worth fighting for? And wow. I, that, cause I knew I was doing this talk later this week. I was like, Whoa, um, that's huge. Wow. So if there is something worth fighting for out there, you're probably going to end up with a few scars, a little bit of suffering and to, you know, choose that is, is heavenly. That's pretty awesome. You know, and becoming, um, and regardless of, um, your views of Matthew Perry, you know, and, uh, you know, the things that, uh, he did or went through and stuff like that, we can, I think we, yeah, we can look at that and be like, here's a dude that had everything seemingly, you know, everything that the world wanted to give him money, well, you know, he struggled with drugs. So obviously that was the world's way of being like, hey, take this to ease your pain and you'll be fine, you know? And so like all the world's comforts or anything that the world says um, is going to make him happy. Like we, we have a plethora of those examples of people that like all the world's comforts didn't do it for them. Um, and then I, I love that you read that because that's, and that's, that's kind of a game changer. Like, was there nothing worth fighting for? Wow. Yeah. And it, it was it kind of came out of the blue too, because uh, you wouldn't expect that to be in, in there, but he does, he talks a lot about God in there and, and, um, seeing it through his, his struggles and his suffering. And, and ultimately he helped a lot of people get sober through his, his time here on earth. And he said, what a, a joy and a reward it was to do that and how amazing it is. And, and that's kind of, a spoiler alert, but that's kind of how the book ends is how he's saying that it's our job 
here on this earth just to help each other out and to, and to get through and, and lift each other up. And I think that, you know, bringing it full circle back to the CrossFit gym. And that's what was so beautiful about the community there is, um, we would write up a, a workout on the board and there we had classes at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., noon, 4 30, 5 30, 6 30. And everybody that day did that workout. It wasn't like, oh, at 6 a.m., you're going to do this workout. And at the 4 30 oh, yeah. class is going to do a whole different workout. And there's going to be special circumstances. And it was like, no, you know that. And then if you came to the noon class and you ran into somebody who was there at 6 a.m., you're like, hey, how's the workout? Yeah. Because it's this is common yeah. shared knowledge of, oh my God, it was horrible or uh, it wasn't <laughs> as bad as it was the other day and stuff. And so, um, it, it was just beautiful how that all worked out. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of like the communion of saints you yeah. know, with us. Um, it's like, wait a minute, I know somebody who's done this workout before. <laughs> yeah. They said it was really difficult too, but here's how they got through it. Um, so that's pretty cool. We're going to take just a very quick uh, break here. Um, remind everybody, you're listening to uh, Divine Mercy Radio's Fall Carathon. His mercy endures forever. Our Carathon goal is $125,000. Uh, we started the day at 81174 and you can go to our website um, at dvmercy.com. Uh, look at the... Um, thermometer there and just as often as it gets updated and uh, see where we're going through the day. Uh, I wanted to um, also uh, thank everybody out there who has donated um, and especially, you know, even uh, this hour, we've already had some uh, donations from Glenn and Sonia Hazelhorse, um, Diane Kerner, uh, you know, all of you people that are out there. Thank you so very much. You guys are blessing us um, and you are blessing God's ministry uh, with your help. I want to get to our second uh, trivia question of this hour. So our second trivia question call 785-621-4110. Here it goes. What feast occurs 50 days after Easter? Is it A, Ascension, B, Assumption, C, Corpus Christi, or D, Pentecost? What feast occurs 50 days after Easter? A, Ascension, B, Assumption, C, Corpus Christi, or D, Pentecost? 785-621-4110. Uh, you know, as Tucker and I are uh, sitting here visiting about um, choosing to do the hard things in an easy world, uh, one of those may just be, you know, uh, calling in, making a donation to this radio station. Um, it may not even be because um, you don't have the money or something like that. But if you're like me, you drive around, you listen to it, and you, you're kind of like, yeah, someone else will do that. <laughs> you know, um, and so it's it may not even be that difficult of a thing. Um, it may just be, you know what, maybe I need to just pull over um, and pick up the phone, dial in, and, uh, um, you know, ask the Lord, uh, what is it that uh, you're wanting me to give? So if that's you, you're driving around or you're at home, you're listening on your Alexa, maybe you're watching over here, Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, something like that. Um, uh, let your giving, well, actually give till it hurts. That's a good one, isn't it? Tucker? There you go. What, what a perfect one to talk about while we're here. Give till it hurts. 785-621-4110. Thank you, everybody. And let's get back to Tucker Mall. I'm choosing to do the hard things in an easy world. All right. You reminded me of uh, Father Mike Schmitz. Yeah. They run uh, Give to the Max Day up in uh, Minnesota. And he tells a story about um, remembering one day when he was walking down the street. I think I'm probably going to butcher this story. But, um, you know, there's somebody on the side of the road that needed some money. And he whips out his wallet and sees there's like only a 50 in there. And he's like. Uh, 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 <laughs> Do you got some change? <laughs> yeah, and he's like, God doesn't ask us just to give; He asks us to give to the max, you know. And and he peeled his fifty out and gave it to the guy and walked off. And he's like, that kind of hurt. Yeah. I I had intended to give him like five or ten bucks, and the, the only thing <laughs> I had available. Um, and it, of course, the the um thing that comes to mind, my mind is I'm like, I know what's in my pocket most of the time, but father Mike is so much holier than I, that he's probably praying or has his mind on God uh -huh. and, and much more important things than what's on my mind th that I know exactly what's in my pocket right now. <laughs> and for him to be like, Oh yeah, um, here you go, buddy. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I, I thought that was a good one. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point to be made too, is um, when you get stuck in a situation, and yeah, it obviously doesn't have to be money, but when we come into a situation where, where we're like, okay, what can I give in this moment? One with me is time. Uh, I will admit this so that people can maybe hold me to it, um, is I'm selfish with my time. You know, um, I think a lot of people are, uh, but at some degree, I think my time is worth more than everybody else's. You know, um, I, I try not to think like that purposefully, but I notice that that's how my actions are a lot of times. I um, mean, so in a situation, you know, where somebody's asking you to give of your time, are you going to give the bare minimum of that moment? Um, like our kids, uh, you know, um, Tucker, you've probably experienced this. Um, my daughters you know, sometimes ask me to play horsies or something. Uh, God bless them. I love them. Um, I think they're both still in school right now, <laughs> but sometimes it's the most difficult thing in the world. And so sure. like, am I going to give five minutes to play in horses? Um, and then I'm going to be like, well, it's time to cook when it's like three o'clock, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, or am I going to go, all right, I'm in this for the long haul because I really don't have anything else to do except for give my daughter my time right now. And so I, I just have to be open because that's one of the real difficult ones for me is like, oh man, I love you, honey. I love you. Here we go. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because through this, I, I didn't want to sit here for an hour and talk about fitness and, and have somebody listening going, I wish I could do that. And I just can't. So what else can I do that is hard, but not fitness? Yeah. You know, it's like maybe it's the hour in the adoration chapel. An hour oh, is a yeah. long time. And I know um, Father Jay, when he was here for the men's conference, that's what his topic was, mm -hmm. was, you know, getting your hour of adoration in every week. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, that's an hour that's an hour I could be working out, you know, that's an hour I could be doing other things. And he's saying how important that is. And then you do it and you're like, oh yeah, this is great. And yeah. it's, it's definitely hard to find that hour. And if, if you can't just do 15 minutes, you yeah. know, uh, but get in there. And then after you've done 15 minutes, maybe next week you do 30, you know, maybe next and just take those baby steps to, to do that. And then, you know, that's your time to do your rose rosary too. So, and maybe you get your extra credit rosary. So you can say your luminous mysteries in there again too, you know, so <laughs> there's just so many options. Credit rosary, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That Use that. Awesome. What do they call that? The, uh, one of the most powerful weapons, yeah. that rosary, you yeah. know, use that powerful weapon as, as often as possible. Yeah. That is fantastic. Want to thank uh, Don or uh, congratulate uh, Don Klaus as our trivia winner. What feast occurs 50 days after Easter? And the correct answer there is Pentecost. Don, we will get you entered into that drawing for the uh, $50 gift certificate to Messenger, traditional Catholic books and gifts. You are listening to Divine Mercy Radio, our fall carathon. His mercy endures forever. We are in here with Tucker Mall. We're going to get right back to our conversation here then, um, choosing to do the hard things in an easy world. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Tucker and I didn't uh, script any of this, so Lord knows where it might go. Um, but we've we've had some awesome conversation here already. Um, and one of those things maybe too, uh, I can speak to a lot of these things because either I fail at them now or I have failed and, and they're a lot, uh, they're difficult, stuff like that. But one of them too that we don't think about maybe is, um, because our mental struggles are very difficult. Um, maybe just like forgiveness, you know, it, oh, yeah. it can be in some ways anyway, you know, anger actually eats us up, which is crazy. I talked about this the other day. I don't remember who it was, maybe Bishop Fulton Sheen that said, um, harboring anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die from it. You know? Um, and so in some ways, yeah, you're like, wow, that's not very, smart um or easy but in the other way sometimes it is it's real easy to want to just snap you know like somebody did something to me so i'm gonna snap it can be really difficult to say you know what even if there was a real injustice done to me i can have mercy on this person well that and the the guilt after you've snapped of uh -huh. you know carrying that for days even of forgiving yourself for 
oh my God, that was horrible. And maybe the other person has already forgiven you and like, yeah, man, you just hadn't eaten yet that day or whatever, you know, (laughs) it's no big deal. And you're still like, I can't believe I did that. And so even just harboring that anger at yourself or that Uh anxiety over what, what did I do? And so, yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying there. Yeah. So did you have some, um, did you have some, uh, uh, quotes or something that you wanted to go over to? I got some uh, Bible or? verses. Let's do one from John, John okay. 16, 33. You will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Wow. So it's not if or it's when, <laughs> um, but, and we talked about it earlier is I think this world so easy that when we do have tribulation, It's like, oh my gosh, this is not supposed to happen in this world because it's supposed to be so easy. But I think those that that dive into and embrace the hard things that when they do hit a bump in the road, they're like, well, it's not as bad as my workout was earlier today. This I can handle this, you know, Uh Uh, I sat in an ice bath today. This is this worry is not even that hard, you know, and so just getting used to suffering. There's even, I know there's a bunch of, um, like apparel brands that are starting to embrace this even too. There's one really? called a uh, few will hunt because hunting's not easy. Yeah. You know, it's cold. You got to get up way early, you know, yeah. after you kill something, you got to drag it back and, and Process. gut it and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. And, but, historically those were the the men in the tribe who got it done you know and nowadays you have to choose that you Mm -hmm. know you don't have to do that and majority don't but few the the small select will do that and that's something my brother-in-law got me into bow hunting uh when he started dating my sister before they were even married i i started doing that with him you know as as kind of a camaraderie thing to Uh you know and now i love it you know, I, I wish I could do more of it actually, but with kids uh-huh. and uh, work and all that stuff, I need to, uh, you know, put some more time into that. But like we said, time is, is yeah. valuable and precious. So it's, it's something I, I enjoy, but it's also hard. Yeah. So I don't like being cold. That, uh, yeah. Me neither, but that is a great, um, kind of segue into, um, even living the virtuous life. Here's the funny thing. You know, and I don't know if you were going to bring up this piece of scripture or not, but um, take my yoke upon yourself because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, sometimes we we look at that and 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 we're like, "What are you talking about? Living living the moral life is not easy." But here's how the two kind of go together: choosing to do the hard thing, right, in an easy world. Um, Well. If you look at, all right, virtue, you know, um, living in such a way that in every moment you're calling yourself to do what's right, that is difficult. But when you make it your view, when you make that virtue the way that you live, it starts to come more naturally. It's not that it's always easy, but it becomes natural to you. And so it's kind of like hunting is, yeah, you you start out, you got to learn how to shoot. You got to learn how to deal with the cold. You got to learn how to get up, you know, and all those things are kind of miserable. Um, but you, in some degree, you start looking forward to it because of like, like the hunt. You know, I think the same thing with the virtues is you start looking for rather than being like, oh, that person cut me off again. Bah, 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 bah. You know, you actually start looking for, you know, like, where can I be patient today? Right. Let's let's test this out. Let, 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 let's see how I can grow in virtue today. Have you, do you notice the same type of things? I think it's a lot of that of when you choose to do the hard things, then you start enjoying the hard things. Mm-hmm. And my wife and I were talking about this the other day because I was like, I don't actually enjoy running, but I keep choosing to run all the time now. And it's just if I'm like. I, I ran three miles today, which to you is it's probably awesome. not very much. Um, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. What's a normal uh, cross country workout? Oh, it just depends on the day. But uh, by the end of the by the end of the season, you know, we're running 45 minutes at a time. You know? Okay. So it just depends. But okay. Yeah. Uh, mine was about 30, 33 today. But yeah. still, it was like, and it was cold and my hands were freezing. And that north wind wasn't much, but it was, it was cold. And yeah. so it's just like, but I get to think and it's quiet 
and I can put some music on the background. I like audiobooks now too. So even if somebody needs something to do, like just go for a walk, grab your rosary and go for a walk. Yeah. Um, Kelton was on here earlier. Um, one summer I texted him, I said, Hey, I got a new workout for you. Do a lunging rosary. Oh, grab your rosary and on the first decade you have to lunge the second decade you can walk because your legs are going to be burning third yeah. decade you have to run, lunge again eventually if you can lunge for all five decades you know lunging is not it's slow it's yeah. pretty easy you know um uh, some people might tell me that their knees hurt that's fine don't do that then you know just walk <laughs> yeah but yeah th i mean and he texts me back. He's like, I made it through one decade lunching. <laughs> I can't do anymore. <laughs> you know, and so it's just, it's cool having that community of, of people who are like willing to try crazy stuff. But I know, uh, yeah, I talked to him about doing kettlebell swings outside when it's freezing out and stuff too. So just pushing yourself to do tough things. Yeah. I think that's um, also, you hit on a really great uh, thought that, uh, having that community around us um to push us to do those also um you know i i remember during COVID, um there was a group of us kelton was one of them uh, that uh, just um called or texted one another and like okay what are you doing today you know i'm like one day i was just like i'm just gonna do a bunch of push-ups send it out there and see who can beat me and i think everybody beat me <laughs> you know because at the time i had done them for like a couple of weeks and you know and so i'm like oh feeling all big and bad here and then like one of my other buddies put it out there and I'm like oh you just destroyed me <laughs> um but it was kind of fun because you have that camaraderie but also that pushing toward um doing something that is difficult because we always i think strive harder when we have somebody pushing with us, you know, um, and, and so um, in our faith, you know, um, we've got the saints, um, but we also need those friends and those family members around us, the, things like that. I think that's awesome. You know, a, a lunging rosary, <laughs> like that had to be ridiculously yeah. difficult. Try it out. It's a, Absolutely. it's a good one. And uh, also I just, a lot of times in, in the middle of that workout, when you're, your lungs are burning, your muscles are burning or whatever. And you can go, I'm offering it up for this. And I think yeah. even, uh, Kelton and, um, Oh, what's his buddy's name? It slips my mind right now. They donated when they were on the air earlier. Um, but I know that they get together and they work out okay. and they set their intention before they start of, you know, this is not going to be easy. What we're about to do, what are we dedicating it towards? Oh wow! And I was, I was blown away because I was like, I don't do that. I need to start doing that, you know? Yeah. And, and another thing, um, that we, we did a lot at, uh, the CrossFit gym that's really, uh, steeped in, in CrossFit tradition, um, our hero wads and, they're dedicated to people who've died in service. And usually they're, they're harder than, than the typical one. The, probably the most well-known one is Murph. We do it on Memorial day every year and it's, uh, you run a mile, then it's 100, uh, pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats. You can divide that up however you want. You can do 10, 20, 30 for 10 rounds. Some people do five, 10, 15 for 20 rounds, and then you'll run another mile. Um, as it's prescribed, you're supposed to wear a weight vest too, like a 20 pound weight vest. Wow. Uh, typically it'll take most people anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour 20, you know, and it's, like I said, it's not easy, mm -hmm. but everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's suffering together. And then, you know, if you got a beginner, maybe they're going to run 800 meters, half a mile, they're going to do half of the reps of everything else. And then another 800 meters. So they're still doing the same workout, but it's just, condensed down a little yeah. bit and so uh it there's uh there's ones dedicated to fallen police officers there's ones for uh military service members uh and their wives and stuff like that and so there's a whole catalog of them out there now that um you could probably do one a day for a couple months and not and not repeat them so uh it's just it's a beautiful thing and i think that even is is kind of almost like remembering the saints and remembering somebody who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And this little workout is going to thank them, you know, 
yeah. from from us who are still left here behind. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, definitely, obviously, we're talking about bringing back the offering it up. Um, but as you were talking, I'm thinking about all kinds of facets in life that we can use that with, um, you know, because especially like you said earlier, when someone said offered up, you're like, oh, thanks, grandma. Thanks, dad. You know, like whoever, like, OK, great. Rub some dirt on it. You know, that's but that was basically the same thing, probably going through everybody's head like, oh, that was a big help. You know, but um, really offering offering it up is just calling to mind um, why you are going through um, this penitential process or whatever it may be. And then saying, you know, basically just making that quick mental note that like may uh, may this go toward their salvation or somebody in purgatory, you know, or, or whatever it is. And, and so that's it's an awesome thing because there's so many things in life we can do that with. You know, like I said, even just um, driving your car and stuff like that is what can I make this an offering for? I may be like, well, since I'm a very impatient person, then for the soul in purgatory who is there because they were very impatient, you know, something like that. So I always try to imagine myself in purgatory, mm -hmm. wondering if my my effort is causing a little bit of of hope or a little bit of uh reprieve uh -huh. for them for for a, a little bit of time yeah. I, I don't know we don't know how that works but yeah um i would imagine that hopefully it, it's doing something absolutely wow did you have um an, another quote or a um, piece of scripture you wanted to read there for us sirach 26 27 oh no that's the chapters anyway this came from test of a man is in tribulation so how are we being tested how are we coming out of that? I've got another one that um, this goes way back to when Father Fred was here. Uh -huh. um, one of his uh, homilies, I actually got a tattoo of it because it hit me so hard. Um, he said the the Latin is ante sepultarum bis morimor. That means before burial, we must die twice. And so our, our second death is obviously our, our earthly death uh -huh. where we're moving on. But that first death is uh, dying to self. and saying no to um what you want to do what feels good what's easy and instead saying no and doing what's hard and so it's it's definitely something that i, I wanted a permanent reminder to say no and and to do what's hard wow can you read that on. quote for me one more time the, the Bible, Sirach one Sirach. Yeah. test of a man the test of a just man is in tribulation Oh, wow. So what I wanted you to read that again, because that reminds me of um, the Knights of Columbus a few years back. And you can find them if you look out there. Um, they made this series of videos. Uh, what was it called? They're just they're just 12 minute videos. If I if I think about it, um, I'll, I'll put it out there. Um, but uh, the Knights of Columbus made these videos. And in one of them, it says, um, as men specifically, we are the first guard against our families. So Satan wants to destroy you first so that when he comes for your family, you're not even a threat. You know, and, and, and they were specifically talking about like um, the dangers of pornography and how it is destroying men and stuff like that. And that kind of goes back to what um, you were talking about at the beginning of this is, um, you know, uh, the, those difficult things to strive against, you know, that kind of shows us. Um, but yeah, that, that really reminded me of that, um, as that call specifically as men to be like, you're the first line of defense for your family as the head of your household. What are you doing? What are you striving for? Are you making any sacrifices so that, um, when Satan comes at your family, he finds it difficult because there's a warrior standing there in front of him. Oh, <laughs> but and and how do warriors train? You know, they get up with purpose. They they're they're scared every day that something's coming for them, you know. And so, you know, if maybe this is your call to fitness to to wake up and, and to work, you know, on breathing hard and making your heartbeat, you yeah. know, and I I can say that because I do it all the time and it's, it's second nature to me, but 
for somebody who doesn't do that, it's, it's tough. Yeah. I get it. And there's a lot of things that I know I need to work on, but I, I think it was father Jay that always said his best homilies are ones he's giving to himself. And yeah. that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I picked this topic because while I, I can say a lot of these things, it's also something I, I need to work on. And yeah, I work out every day and and that's not a hard thing for me to do because it's a habit I built up, but there's a lot of things I do need to work on that. Yeah. I need to keep choosing to do what's hard and, and right and not what's easy and, and yeah, sinful. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like you said, you get up in the morning and uh, take an ice bath and do your devotionals. And I'm like, man, it's hard for me just to get up, but to get into an ice bath. Um, but also, yeah, it's just something I need to work on is um, I try very often to go through the daily readings, but it's more of a let's get through this so I can fall back asleep on the couch. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm uh, yeah, I'm not really in confession right now, but a little bit. Um and so, yeah, that's something that I know also that I need to um, choose the difficult um, because it's very easy to, all right, let's get through this so I can go back to sleep. Um, it's a lot more difficult to go, no, I'm just going to get up and I'm going to stay up. I'm going to read the scriptures with intent um, and not as a check mark. You know, I mean, and so that's one thing that I think definitely is something that um, anybody can work on. You know, um, cause we're talking a lot about bodily things and stuff like that, but also definitely on that spiritual side, what are things we can do, um, as basically everybody, well, everybody can find an app, um, can find, um, the Bible itself, you know, whatever, and read some scripture every day. Um, I'll, I'll confess something here really quick. I hate to stretch. Oh, me too. It, it's painful, it but it's yes. just like. I don't know. It's, it seems like a waste of time. <laughs> you took, I, would, I didn't want to say it out loud, but yeah, I, I agree. I um, but my dad got me on this and I hate to admit how right he is sometimes, you know, but we got him a, a Magnificat subscription for a Christmas year ago or something like uh -huh. that. And uh, cause I love mine. And, um, and he's like, Hey, I love the Magnificat. I say it every morning, every evening. He said, but what I've started doing is I stretch while I read it. I'm like, oh, a double dip. That's great, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, but then I'm like, ow, this this is tough, uh -huh. you know? And so instead of sitting in my comfy chair with my uh, coffee, I get on the floor and oh, I wow. stretch and read my Magnificat. And it's painful. And I'm offering it up while I'm reading my scriptures. And then I stand up and I'm going, wow, I'm really glad I stretched. I feel a lot better today, you know? And it's oh. just so many of those things where you're like, I don't like this. It hurts. And I'm glad I did it. Absolutely. Wow. I just realized that we're almost out of we time. Through I sometimes our, forget. Our I, I sometimes forget to look at the clock and I look down and I'm like, oh my goodness, we have two minutes left. So um, I'm going to let Tucker leave us with anything. Is there one uh, last thing that you want to leave us with before we uh, depart today? You no, know, uh, you and my dad have been hosting for the past couple of days. You guys have done awesome. No, uh, this you. is not really in your wheelhouse. Uh, you're not really trained to do this, are you? <laughs> no. You guys, been, you guys have been killing it. They asked me to do that. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Give me a year, maybe next year okay. I can help out with that. But um, you guys have done an awesome job and I'm just, uh, I'm glad to be a part of this and hopefully we can uh, get some people moving and, and working hard. Awesome. Thanks, Tucker. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, man. Always good to see you. Keep praying for us. <laughs> Absolutely. Have a wonderful day, sir. Yeah. All right. You are listening to Divine Mercy Radio's Fall Carathon. His mercy endures forever. Our Carathon goal was $125,000. We started the day with $81,174 and uh, been working at that goal all day long. Uh, thank you to all of the donors that uh, we have gotten so far. Um, we still have a few hours left 